Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor, and today we're continuing our first look at the Italian Destroyer line, this time with Tier 7's Luca Tarigo. Luca Tarigo is the last ship in the line that I can definitively prove, or at least satisfy myself, was an actual historical ship. She is a Navigatori-class destroyer that... Um, let me go back over here and have a double check here. Yep. She was uh, laid down in uh, the 1920s, commissioned in November of 1929, and lost uh, in April of 1941. So this is a, one of the historical ships in the line. And the Italians were very prolific destroyer builders. They had lots of designs and ships and so on and so forth. So as we head on up the line, maybe I'll be able to, to, to do some more research before I get those other, those other ships. But I haven't found them just yet. I'll keep my eyes open. So... Luca Tarigo here is comes into a, a, a busy field of Tier 7 destroyers. But Tier 7, if you've not played a lot of destroyer, Tier 7 is a very awkward tier for destroyers. Just Des destroyers in general. No matter what class, nation, every Tier 7 destroyer is a little awkward. And the reason for that is because you're right on the cusp. You're one tier shy of getting that all-important concealment module. But at Tier 7, you can't. And you're constantly finding yourself paired up uh, in matchmaker against ships that can. And so the, a normal tier seven destroyer is at a spotting disadvantage and has to learn how to manage that particular quirk. And Luca Torigo is no exception, but she has some other things working against her here that, um, well, I feel kind of bad for her. Um, I, you know, if you, if you watch the low tier Italian destroyer video, you heard me here, you heard me say that, uh, tier four's, uh, turbine was kind of, I felt like was maybe like a low point in the line. I feel like Torigo might feel sort of the same way. So let me, um, let me kind of, let me kind of dive in and I'll explain why. Starting off 15,100 hit points is not that exciting. It's really not. I feel like this is one place that they could really stand to buff the ship as it stands right now. Um, there are several other destroyers in this tier uh, that have lots of HP. Now, you have to remember that the German branch that starts at tier 7, Z, that was Z31, has you know 19,000 hit points and change. Those are basically little pocket-like cruisers. And so those are always going to outclass a normal destroyer. But if you take that out of the equation... Um, uh, you still are looking at uh, Valkalen has 15, uh, 18, over 18,000. Gajamata in the Pan-Asian tree, 15,200. Still more than this, right? Um, so uh, Minsk has the same HP as this. Leningrad has a little more, 100 HP more. Um, Haida, Haida, which is a destroyer predator, which is what this thing wants to be, also has more HP than this. So... Uh, you know, like, like I said last video, it feels to me like these ships should be really good cap contesters, really good destroyer assassinators, but at this tier, this hit point pool feels lacking to fill that role, at least to me on paper. Maneuverability and concealment, I mean, armor layout, I'll talk about it real briefly, 16 millimeters, you have, you have no armor, <laughs> get, get used to it. Maneuverability and concealment, 38 knots, 610 on the turning circle, 3.6 on the rudder shift. Again, 38 knots is not best in tier, very much on the high end, far more competitive. Whereas it, down at tier six, it was like, oh yeah, this is really good. At tier seven, it's like, well, there's a lot of ships up here that also have, you know, this kind of speed. Um, Akatsuki has this kind of speed. Gajimata has this kind of speed. Bliskovica has this kind of speed. Sims has this kind of speed. The two Russian destroyers, Minsk and Leningrad, have more speed. So it's competitive, but it's not best in tier. 610 on the turning circle is actually pretty solid. I'd call it above average, as is the 3.6 rudder shift, probably a little above average. I really do feel like she's going to handle very well. And if you're used to playing the Italian cruisers, you know what I'm talking about. Those ships handle like sports cars. And I really do expect the Italian destroyer line to feel that good when you're at the helm. Um, 7.1 commoners detection on the surface you see there. Let me verify. No, that has been nerfed up to seven and a half. So a full stealth rig Luca Torigo gets down to 6.55 kilometer detection on the surface. That is, I'd say it's typical of a, of a normal kind of gunboat in this tier, right? You're looking at, um, Sims, Mahan, Minsk, Leningrad, Vauklen, Leberek Maas, all have, um, uh, Bliskavica, all have similar, not identical, but similar detections, detection radii in their full stealth rig. So the very ships that she probably doesn't want to compete against necessarily, certainly not early in a match, she has the same detection as, more or less. That's going to feel a little bad, or at least you're going to have just enough of a detection bonus to get the first salvo win, but that's about all you can really say there. 
Now, when I say first salvo, that's a noteworthy achievement. She does have, she's, she moves up an extra gun from Abietti down at tier six. We've got, we've got now three of these double barrel turrets. We've changed our turret configuration once again. If you remember, this is actually the same turret we saw down at tier five. The turrets we saw on Abietti at tier six were a more modern turret than this. So I'm not sure why the regression precisely. At least we're still keeping the 50 caliber barrels and the 950 meters per second shell velocity. So you're getting the same ballistics you got down at tier six. You're just getting it in a different turret, different looking turret configuration. Max range there, eight kilometers. And again, we noted earlier, her max stealth was six and a half. So, you know, like we've been saying all along, they're gonna be really, really strong cap contesters, but past that, these ships start to feel a little on the rough side. Like, what is actually happening here? Like, do you, I mean, look at that. Look, you, you look at the HE shells and you think, okay, yeah, I might find myself, you know, as a destroyer, I might find myself using my HE to harass an opposing battleship. Well, yeah, but at eight kilometers, at eight kilometers, this thing's going to be up tiered into tier nine matches against the occasional German battleship that's going to have six kilometer hydro. And you've only got two kilometers on that guy. With your gun battery range, his secondaries have more range than you do. Way more range than you do. Like, lots of battleships you're going to go up against have more secondary range than you do. So, picking a fight with somebody significantly bigger than you in an Italian destroyer starts to become a very, very real risk, depending on the target. I really feel like these ships, like, they're going to have a very high, skills, high skill floor, Right? This is not a line that I think I would encourage new players to try to learn how to play Destroyer in. This feels me like, I won't say Destroyer on hard mode, but let's say advanced Destroyer mode, right? Like, yeah, that's about all I can really say there. Um, the torpedoes, yep, they continue to lack. These are exactly, this is exactly the same torpedo armament you had down at tier six. I've got two centerline mounted triple tube launchers. They're configured a little different. They're not side by side. They've got that two down, one up, but it's still 10 kilometers, 56 knots, 1.1 on the surface detection. Um, let me check the reload. The reload speed there says 70 seconds. Let's see if that's still correct. Checking, checking, checking. Yes, that is correct. So they haven't nerfed this one. So that gives her a little better torpedo armament than um, Avietti down at tier six, but only by five seconds. Like that's that's not really significantly. Noteworthy. That's probably not going to make or break a game. Um, again, we mentioned depth charges. She has them. Don't get too excited just yet. They're still balancing all that. You know, nothing to get, nothing to write home about there. A defense, as we mentioned before, uh, uh, in previous ships, she has some AA guns. They're not anything awesome, really. Um, she's got a couple, a uh, couple of multi-purpose mounts here. Uh, some of these 37 millimeters that give her a medium aura. And then she's only got two of those in the stern. Then she's got some of these little, uh, half inch, half inch, uh, bread of machine guns kind of scattered throughout. They're pretty little mounts. Um, they don't do a whole lot. I mean, they, the damage is not bad, right? Again, she's got enough H. She's got enough a, 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 um, AA to shoot down fighters that get dropped to spot her, but she's not going to be shooting down many, you know, actual attack bombers that come for her. That's just not, it's not what this ship is going to do well. Not now, not ever. Um, quick look at the uh, consumables over here. Come on. There we go. Yep, damage control, uh, four charges of the exhaust smoke generator, and let me go double check and make sure she is supposed to be getting uh, the speed boost, and yes, she is also getting the emergency speed boost here. So that's not shown yet, that'll be coming in the next patch, they'll be adding that into the ship. So again, she'll have that 25 seconds of a 25% speed boost, speed boost on about a three minute cooldown, a little less than three minute cooldown. I think, I, again, on paper, Luca Trigo looks to me like another one of the low points of the line. Um, you don't get any significant improvement in the torpedo armament. You do get an extra barrel. Um, the DPS does go up accordingly because you have the same reload, the same turret traverse, but you don't get a significant health or concealment boost to go with uh, to go with the extra barrel, which in my mind means it's going to be harder to utilize these ships. You so, uh, utilize the guns, really. Ordinarily, a ship like this, I might suggest, you know, pair it up with another 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 destroyer that's stealthier than you. And there are quite a few in this tier bracket. Um, you know, grab a um, you know grab a grab an Akatsuki or Shiratsuyu. Well, Akatsuki not so much, but grab a Shiratsuyu and run him out in front of you um, and let him spot things. But the problem is your gun range forces you in so close that I'm not convinced that's a great idea. Right? I just I. Mm. I feel like Luca Torigo is going to be a very big struggle. Um, I just feel like this is going to be like if you, if you, if you want to 
if, if you, I don't know how, we don't know how early access is going to go, right? But I feel like, I feel like this is a ship that you might want to try. Like if you get this ship in early access, play it some early before people kind of figure out the weaknesses and try to rack up as much XP in it as you can. Because I really feel like once folks get a better look at it, they're going to realize that it's not that big of a threat. I mean, the SAP is kind of a threat. Let me look at these DPS numbers real quick, right? If I'm, if I'm, if I go back and look at the DPS out of the SAP, um, full pins over 185,000 damage per minute, a single salvo, if they all land and do full damage, which can't happen, basically, you're really just going to get full pens, would be 17k. So that's actually not even really realistic. Um, so really, you're looking at, realistically, it's more like a third of that. Um, so really, you're looking at maybe, maybe 5k salvos, right, against opposing destroyers. So you have the ability, if you can land all your shells, get them all to full pen, right, in probably four salvos, less than 30 seconds, you can wipe out an opposing destroyer. For like in the, uh, uh, equal tiered from scratch. But you're not going to get to do that very often because it's going to require you to take such extreme risk with your ship that I'm not sure you're going to survive the experience, right? Um, for a ship that I think is meant to be a cap contester, I don't think Luca is going to be suited for it early in a game. I feel like this is a ship that you're going to intentionally want to play almost like a heavy cruiser. You push up two, well, half or three quarters speed early, let the game settle in, figure out roughly where the opposing destroyers are, then decide where to be. Because I feel like if you commit too quickly, you're going to find yourself dead because you just don't have the health pool that you really need, in my opinion, to kind of maximize the guns and everything else that, 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 that the way this line is quote unquote supposed to work. I just don't feel like she's got the health for it. Anyway, guys, there's our quick first look at Tier 7's Luca Tarigo. Hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.